All right, we're live. Welcome, everybody. So, tell me a little bit about yourself. My name is Sergeant First Class Swartz. I'm a recruiter for the New York Army National Guard here out of New York City. And welcome to the Facebook page. I'm going to answer some questions for you. I've been in the National Guard for about 15 years now. Started out as a human resources specialist part time, eventually transitioned as an engineer where I operate cranes on a construction site. Um, and eventually, I went to a leadership school, uh, got motivated to be a leader. And um, I chose the National Guard because as a volunteer fireman for my local town of State, New York, it was very important for me to serve my community and help out in times of need. And that's pretty much what the National Guard is all about. So that's how I got to become a recruiter because I wanted to give people a good experience into getting into the military, specifically the National Guard. So who can join the National Guard? Pretty much anyone who meets the eligibility requirements. In general, you have to be between the ages of 17 to 35 possess a high school diploma or a GED, and then um, minimal to no law violations, uh, no major medical issues, and um, be willing to grow within your organization. So what makes the National Guard different from other services? That's a really good question. Um, there's really not a whole lot of a difference, but there is a minor difference, and the major thing is we have the same mission as everyone else, which is our federal mission. We answer to the president for any overseas missions, which is our humanitarian missions, peacekeeping missions, and obviously combat. Um, what makes the Army National Guard different and unique and what attracted me to the National Guard, like I said, I was a volunteer fireman for my local town and state. So I like putting the hot stuff, I mean the wet stuff and the hot stuff, and helping our community in times of need is what drove me to go to the National Guard. So as part of the state mission, we respond to natural disasters, state emergencies, civil unrests, essentially anything that our governor deems necessary because he's our commander-in-chief for all of our state missions. So I'm still in high school. Do I have to wait until I graduate to join? Not necessarily. If you're 17 years of, uh, of age and your parents are willing to sign off in the parental consent form, you can join the National Guard now. We have what we call the split training option. And basically what that means is, providing that we can find you a basic traineeship date at the end of this junior year, You'll go to basic training throughout the summer, and then from there, you'll have a mandatory return date where you come back in the fall semester, and you finish out your senior year, you graduate, and then about mid-July, you'll ship out to your AIT, your Advanced Individual Training, whichever MOS or Military Occupational Specialty that you sign up for to join the National Guard. So what if I'm in college or plan to be? National Guard definitely be a good fit for you. There's a lot of benefits in being part of the National Guard as a part-time soldier. You'll drill one weekend per month and roughly about two to three weeks during the summer depending on your unit, what their mission is and what they have going on. What makes it great is we have the same federal benefits as everyone else because you kind of get the best of both worlds between federal and state benefits. So you'll get the federal tuition assistance just like everyone else. You'll have the scholarship program, what we call the, or what we refer to as the Montgomery GI Bill. In addition to that, because you belong to the state, every state has a certain amount that will pay up to 100% through the state tuition assistance, which no other branch of service has. So that's our advantage over the rest of the military. So what's drill? Drill is essentially <laughs> you'll put this uniform on one weekend per month, and whatever MOS or job skill you signed up to do within the National Guard, that's what you'll do on your drill weekend. So what's the recruitment process like? What can I expect when I step into your office? So when you step into my office, the first thing that I'm going to do with you is I'm going to share with you exactly who we are, what we do, and essentially what we have to offer you. I'll ask you a few additional questions to get to know you a little bit better, and at the end of that conversation, after I address all your questions and concerns, we'll talk about the next step, which is the ASVAB test. So what question do you get asked the most? Um, what are my chances of being deployed? How much do we get paid? And... Um, what can you do in the National Guard? And pretty much you could go to the National Guard page. They have a bunch of calculators depending on your rank and how much education you have or certain experiences or certain fields. You may be able to come in at a higher rank, so check out their calculator, figure out what you get paid during your drill status and when you're in active duty or full-time status in training. Uh, as far as deployments are concerned, it's not the Boy Scouts or the Girl Scouts, so plan on going somewhere at some point throughout your military career. I personally have not been anywhere yet. I've been in for 15 years, so that's how that works. As far as what you'll do, it's based on the ASVAB test, which is the Armed Services Vocational Aptitude Battery Test. 
So based on those test results, which will dictate or determine what you're uh, pre-qualified for based on your test results alone. So what can I do to prepare myself to join the National Guard? Um, pretty much try to, uh, as far as to prepare yourself for joining the military, pay attention in school, don't be a test taker. Uh, what I mean by that is to learn the material just for the test and then forget it. Try to retain that information. Stay out of trouble, don't do drugs, don't do anything illegal. And in general, stay active. You don't have to go to the gym every five, pretty much uh, five or six days a week. Just in general, be active and, and fit. So I'm signing up to join the National Guard. What happens next? So you'll take the test, which I just said before, and that test will determine what MOSs or job skills that we could offer you. Uh, pretty much as long as you give me the North and South that you want to take it to, to the next step, we're going to schedule you for your medical exam. Providing that you pass your medical exam, we're going to set you up for the contract on that same day. From there, you're going to go, we're going to schedule you out for basic training, which is BCT. And that could be anywhere from a couple weeks or upwards to six months out. And in between there, you're going to immediately start working one weekend a month with the RSP or the Recruit Sustainment Program. It's a great program. It's phenomenal. Um, the National Guard has a higher success rate in basic training because of this program. It's broken down into three phases, red, white, and blue. Red phase is a lot of mandatory classes like the history of the National Guard. Uh, we have SHARP, we have uh, EO, we have various mandatory classes. Then you have the white phase, which is a little bit, uh, a little more interesting. We do map reading, drill and ceremony, where you learn how to march. Uh, we learn how to clear rooms, land navigation, basic first aid, things of that nature. And then you go into the blue phase, which is my favorite, where you get ready for basic training. And what blue phase is, what that does is that prepares you mentally uh, what to expect from basic training. We have what we refer to as battle handoffs, which are the soldiers that come back from basic training in AIT, and they essentially talk about their experiences. Instead of us telling you what our experiences were, which were many, many moons ago, they'll talk about their experience right now, and you can ask them specifically. From there, you'll go to your basic training, you'll knock that out, then you're gonna go into your job training, which you complete your AIT, your advanced individual training, the job that you signed up for. Then you'll come back home, and you'll continue to work one weekend per month, and two to three weeks out of the year, depending on your unit. So what if I want a certain MOS? Well, if you want a particular MOS, then you're gonna have to do a little bit of research, but in general, the ASVAB test is an aptitude test. So it's designed to figure out, based on what you know now, what are you more than likely to be successful with with the proper training. So, not so much how well you score on the test will determine what job skills, because in general, the two English, two math sections, Will, um, will determine that you're good at math and that means that you're able to sign a contract. The whole test itself, it takes two or three sections to come up with 10 different averages. Those are what determines what job skills we can offer you. And so what would you say to people that are scared to talk to a recruiter? Don't be scared, <laughs> we're human. Um, just try to think of some questions to ask your recruiter because a lot of times uh, Applicants will be a little intimidated to talk to us. I don't know if it's the uniform or if we're very militant. But just write down your questions because people get brain farts and they forget their questions and things. And, um, you know, just be as comfortable as you possibly can because we're just, just like you. We put our pants on one leg at a time and, and we'll take care of you. Just be honest and forthright with your recruiter just like you are expecting us to be honest and forthright with you. Awesome. And we have a lot of questions coming in from people. A lot of people have tattoos. Can I still join the National Guard if I have a tattoo? Yes, you may, but we do have some restrictions. We're back to the old school rules where sleeves are authorized. However, um, if you're planning on getting a tattoo or if you already have a tattoo in, the, in these two locations I'm about to share with you, then we can request a, an exception to policy waiver, but they're not getting approved at this time. So essentially, if you have a tattoo from your wrist bone down to your fingertips, you're a no-go. If you're wearing a t-shirt like this and the tattoo is visible, you're a no-go. Anything below the neck and above the wrist, <clears throat> uh, as long as it's not gang related, uh, nudity, okay. profanity, okay. Okay. or anything that's not uh, deemed inappropriate. As long as it doesn't meet that, then you're good to go with your tattoos. And can you describe basic training? 
Basic training is going to transition you from a civilian into a soldier. So in those 9 to 10 weeks of basic training, you're going to be learning everything from land navigation to the gas chamber to how to maneuver through the woods, clearing out rooms, land navigation, basic first aid, you're going to be doing team building obstacle courses, ruck marches, field training exercises, all kinds of different things. You're going to shoot for two weeks on the rifle range. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, <laughs> obviously it's going to be challenging for a lot of people, but um, as long as you're mentally prepared and you build your resiliency and you know and expect certain things to happen, then you're going to be just fine. So what if I have prior service and I'm thinking about joining or re-enlisting, what would you say? Let's definitely come down, check it out, see what we can do for you. We can change your MOS if you qualify for a new one or if you have uh, an MOS that you already qualify for, there may be bonuses involved. Uh, when enlisting with that MOS. How family friendly would you say that the National Guard is? We've got a lot of single moms out there. We've got parents that are a little concerned. What would you say? Um, providing that you can um, assign somebody as your family, uh, uh, basically you're going to assign somebody as a guardian, so you have to do what we call a family care plan. So you're not giving up custody of your child, but you basically have to tell us that, you know what, I have somebody over here that can watch my child while I'm away for training or a drill. So we're very friendly. We get family care plans approved. I just enlisted person right now, and um, he's going to be leaving at the end of the month. So yes, we are family friendly, and we're good. When do you suggest that someone talks to a recruiter if they're interested? While they're still in high school, if they're 16, 17, what would you say? The earlier the better, because the more information you get, the, you know, the more well-informed of a decision that you can make. And what are the education requirements of joining the Guard? You need, as of right now, you need at least a GED or a high school diploma. And what if you have any prior misdemeanors or felonies? What would you say to those people? Get your dispositions, uh, maybe even your court minutes, depending on the severity of the case. But in general, if they're dismissed, for the most part, you're good to go. Um, if they're ACD or if there's prejudice with the case, then you may require a waiver if possible or if not, then you may be disqualified. But definitely be honest and disclose those to your recruiter. Don't withhold anything or withheld, oh yeah, withhold any information because in the end, if you sign your contract then uh, and it pops up and you lied, then you're going to be kicked out. And can you tell us a little more about the ASVAB, what kind of test that is, what scores, do they differ in each state? The ASVAB test is the same across the board no matter what branch of service you go into. There are nine different sections, testing you in the math, English, um, general science, shop, electronics, mechanics, and assembly of shapes. And it's an aptitude test. So what that means is, like I said earlier, based on what you know now, what you learned in a, in a classroom environment or through real world experiences, all you need to score is at 31% or better. It's not like your typical high school or college exam where 65, 70% is passing. So the highest you can score in the ASAP test is a 99. The minimum score required to be able to sign a contract is a 31. So the difference between a 30 and 31 is 31 you can sign a contract. If you get over to a 99, those are just bragging rights. All that essentially means is that you can sign a contract. So don't get upset if you miss it by a few points or, or if you get like a 55. It's not a typical exam where 70% is passing. So if you pass it, you got the W, <laughs> you're in there like swimwear. And what full-time opportunities does the National Guard offer? National Guard has a few options for you. Uh, we have what we call state active duty because we belong to the state and the federal government. We have various federal programs like myself, Active Guard Reserve, which we refer to as AGR. Um, we have military technicians, which are soldiers working as uh, kind of like on the civilian sector. We have civilian positions and things of that nature. What's the age limit to join the Guard? 17 to 35. What if I have prior service? Then you have, as long as you can retire with 20 good years for retirement purposes, your age is irrelevant. So if you've been out for 10 years and you have 10 years in, obviously you can come back in. As long as you can complete 20 good years for retirement purposes, you can come back into the military or a national guard. What if I want to transfer states? Oh, that's what we refer to as interstate transfer. So once your MOS or job qualified, um, from that point forward, as let's say I decide to take a position down in Virginia and I have a new place, new home of record. I talk to my interstate transfer coordinator for the state of New York. So the New York Army National Guard 
We will talk to the Virginia National Guard and they will find you a new home in, in, in your new state and you continue serving within the National Guard. All right, you guys are sending a lot of questions. Keep coming in. What can you tell me about the RSP program? RSP is hands down the best program out there. I'm telling you right now, you can be mentally, more mentally prepared, physically prepared. We train you on just about everything. Um, everything from drone ceremony, how to salute, when to salute, customs and courtesies, the history, some minor things that you'll learn in basic training. So that way when you get there, it's not a culture shock. You have already know what to expect. You've watched videos, you've talked to people who come back from training. So it's a really a, a good program. And the best part about it is you're getting paid. Can I join the Guard if I have a GED? Yes, you can. What about college benefits? Can you tell me about those? Yes. We have the federal tuition assistance, just like all the other reserve branches, which is $4,000 per fiscal year. We have the scholarship program, which we commonly refer to as the Montgomery GI Bill. <clears throat> then we have the state tuition assistance, which will pay up to 100% for all public colleges or universities. Can I use my phone at basic training? You can bring your cell phone to basic training. I highly recommend it because pay phones uh, are not so much fun. But uh, it depends on the drill sergeant and how well you perform within your platoon and how well your platoon does. Uh, first three weeks, I probably wouldn't expect a phone call other than when you first get there. But throughout that time there, throughout, uh, from time to time, you'll earn that privilege to be able to call home to your friends and family. You may have as little as five minutes or sometimes 20 minutes. Me personally, I had very little time. So I'm really excited about joining the Guard and I want to post on my social media when I'm shipping out and where I'm going. What do you think? I wouldn't do that. I know you're super happy, you're proud, and you want to go out and tell the whole world that you're leaving, this, that, whatever, but due to operation security or for your safety, uh, there are threats out there that are looking for things like that, and it could potentially put you in an awkward position where something may happen. So I wouldn't post dates, locations, unit that you belong to, uh, or at least by name, things of that nature. Nothing personal. Just uh, keep it general, and, and, uh, and you'll be okay. What if I want to be an officer in the National Guard? Um. If you meet the eligibility requirements in general, you would have to qualify for a secret clearance. There is a particular line score, which we refer to as a GT line score. It needs to be 110 points or higher. Um, and there's an interview process and things of that nature. And the minimum amount of college credits to start the OCS program, which, which is what we call it, um, you need 90 college credits, but it's preferred that you already have a four-year degree. So a lot of people are struggling to lose weight, but they really want to join the Guard. Is there any sort of fitness advice you would give them or how you stay in shape? Um, yes. I would, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, but read a book. It's called The New Abs Diet. It's a book that I read. It's all about clean eating. And it's really true what they say, that you are what you eat. So if you put in garbage, then you know, you're gonna look like garbage, you're gonna feel like garbage, but if you eat clean, because you have to eat everything. Um, but read the book, The New Apps Diet, it'll break down to the good fats, the bad fats, good carbs, bad carbs, and so on and so forth. So once you learn how to put the right foods in you, then you'll be good to go. And as far as working out, YouTube has a, a bunch of programs out there. Um, you can buy a book, go to a gym. The last time I checked, the streets are free and the jungle gyms are free at the local park. So. But the thing is, if this is important to you, then you will find the time to put in the effort to get to the gym, to eat right, and to do everything that you need to do to be able to join. If it's not that important to you, then it's a di there's a difference. Are you committed or are you interested? Because if you're interested, you may or may not go to the gym. But if you're committed, you will get to the gym. And how long can I sign up to join the National Guard? We have a few options for you, four to be exact. We have a three-year option, four-year option, a six-year option, or an eight-year option. Generally, I only offer the three and the six, and those are pretty much it. If you want the Montgomery GI Bill, the minimum requirement is six years, so if education is extremely important to you, I would recommend the six-year option. If college is not important to you, or maybe you just want to get your feet wet and test out the waters, do the minimum of three years. How can I rank up? There's two options. You could do what we call a stretch for skills, which you'll do a full Army physical fitness test, testing your ability to do as many push-ups as you can in two minutes, many sit-ups as you possibly can in two minutes, and running two miles in the shortest time possible. If you can pass that, 
and then take an online course that quizzes you on the information that we teach you throughout the RSP program, um, then you can rank up to a private E2. Um, if you want to rank up to an E3, then we have the Stripes for Buddies system, which is if you refer a friend or a coworker or somebody you know, in the event that they actually sign a contract, that will automatically, well, paperwork has to go through, but that will push you up to an E2 uh, or a private E2, and your second person that you refer, if they end up signing a contract, will push you up to an E3, private first class. And do I get any student loan payment options if I join the Guard? If eligible and you score high enough on the ASAP test and if your loans are federally recognized on the NSLDS website, we will pay up to $50,000 in pre-existing student loans that are not in default. Uh, what if I want to re-enlist? What would you say? Go for it. Um, we, all, we all originally signed our contract for one reason, but I can guarantee you that that reason will change. Everyone extends their contract or re-enlists for a different reason. Uh, I'm, I'm already serving on my third contract. Um, definitely look at it. There are bonuses involved um, in most cases when you re-enlist. So definitely check it out. Sit down with your, your recruiting and retention NCO or your unit full-timer and or some of your full-time staff and, and they'll share those things with you. I'd like to go active duty. You can always go from part-time to full-time. It's called a conditional release, DD form 368. Uh, usually it takes about 45 to 60 days, upwards to 45, 65 days to get approved. Once approved, that's your free ticket to go check out any other branch of service that is interested, uh, that you're interested in. Now, you still have to fulfill your obligation to the National Guard, do your one week and a month drills until you leave, but that is your ticket to go active duty, providing that you're eligible for them and they accept you. How can I prepare for basic training? In general, just stay physically active. Um, you know, if you're in school, pay attention in class. If you're not in school, maybe brush up on your math, uh, read a few books, look up some vocabulary words, build up your vocabulary a little bit. Uh, they have various programs out there. There's tutors, things of that nature. If you didn't pass the test, if you didn't pass the test, it's not the end of the world. Just study and, um, you know. How can I prepare for the Army Physical Fitness Test? Um, the Army Physical Fitness Test comprises of the push-ups, sit-ups, and running. So in basic training, the way they do it is three, two to three days out of the week, you'll be doing strength training or calisthenics, and the other two to three days, you'll be doing running. So you want to do push-ups, sit-ups, squats, anything that deals with uh, body-resistant exercises. Um, like I said, there are programs out there that you can download from YouTube, books, things of that nature. Or you can go to your local gym, get a personal trainer. Um, as far as running, mix it up a little bit. One day, run one day, like you're running for a PT test for time, two miles as fast as you can. Second day, you're going to run maybe half a mile to warm up, and then you do like 10 wind sprints. And then on the third day, you're going to go for a three-mile jog, which is uh, like, like a leisurely run, just for fun. Just don't stop. Mix it up a little bit. Can my friend and I go to basic together? It is possible to have uh, that in place in your contract. Um, yeah. yeah, it could work. How can I change my MOS? Um, Provided if your, your unit has that particular MOS, you can change your uh, MOS to a different one while you're in the same contract. Or in my case, I was a human resources specialist and my unit disbanded, so I had no choice. I had to find a new home and a new MOS, so I had to reclass into a new one. If you, um, let's say you wanted to be a, let's say a combat medic, but they didn't have any at that time, so you came in as a cook. Well, you'll come in as a cook, and sometime later on throughout your contract, you can negotiate that with your unit. And if you're a good soldier and you're always doing what you're supposed to do and you always go above and beyond of what is expected of you, sometimes your units will work with you. But at the end of your contract, you can renegotiate your MOS and your unit that you want to be assigned to. What is MEPS like? <laughs> MEPS is where dreams are made and crushed. MEPS is short for Military Entrance Processing Station. For many of you, that's where you'll take your ASVAB test, TAPAS tests, you'll do the medical exam, and you'll do your contract, and you'll also be shipping from that location. What can you tell me about some of the MOSs? Some of the MOS, I mean, there's over 150 MOSs, so it's we could be here all night, but we have everything from administration, finance, anything in the telecommunications field, signal support, 
uh, medical field, mechanics, weapon specialist, obviously combat arms, we have infantry, field artillery, um, military police, things of that nature. What if I want to be a medic in the Guard or I have medical experience, how will that translate over? Depending on what education level you may have, may offer you an opportunity to become a commissioned officer within the medical field, uh, as a nurse or a doctor, things of that nature. But if you're just like an LPN or, or let's say a paramedic, um, all that will do is if you qualify for 68 Whiskey, which is our combat medic, it'll alleviate some of that civilian part portion of your training. And that's pretty much about it. How does my guard experience translate in the civilian world? Well, we have a lot of leadership training. Um, some things will transition or, uh, uh, or relate to the medical field. Like if you're, let's say you join as a 68 Whiskey Combat Medic, you're actually going to be nationally certified as a basic EMT. And that is one way that it can transition to the civilian sector. And what's about the tattoo policy again? We hear a lot of different things. Basically, bottom line is no tattoos on your hands, basically from your wrist bone to your fingertips, and nothing above the neck collar. So, someone failed the ASVAB once, what would you say to them? If this is something that's important to you, I would recommend to you to go buy the GED book and study the math. That's where most people not that don't do so well with. Um, or you can go out and get the ASVAB book. There's the ASVAB for Dummies, the Barron's edition, or the Kaplan edition. But I was recently recommended to, you know, have someone get the GED version uh, of the book and learn the math through there. But um, if you score over a 20 or over an 18, if you put in the effort and the time to study and maybe even get a tutor, you will pass that test. So don't get discouraged because a lot of people get discouraged. Don't. I have asthma, but I've never had an attack. What are my chances of being able to join the guard? Well, I would recommend that you go to your doctor and get a preliminary test, test, get tested for asthma, get a medical all clear, and get all your uh, doc medical documentation pertaining to asthma from the moment you were diagnosed to it, from your last attack. Um, but it's usually a disqualifier. Um, in general, if you haven't had an attack or used an inhaler or been prescribed anything since age 13, a waiver may be entertained. And you have to obviously provide medical documentation for that. And so if my wife gets transferred, can I move states? Well, in the National Guard, you belong to your state, so you're going to be living and working within your hometown. So unless you're actually going to be moving to another state for a job or maybe you're relocating just because, um, then you could relocate with her. Or if you're re relocating over there, you're going to transfer from one unit to the next. And if it's from one state to another, you're going to conduct what we mentioned earlier, which is an interstate transfer. What about piercings? Piercings are okay. They'll have to be removed, obviously, whether it's on the body or on the ears. Um, what we do not accept at this time are gauges, which are the, the big discs that people like to put here or somewhere. Um, I, unfortunately, those are not authorized at this time. What about my hair? Does that matter? Male or female. Either or. Um, we do have a regulation, so it's AR 670-1, males pretty much, uh, nothing in size, doesn't have to be this close, just saying. But um, females have to be of uh, natural hair color, and there are certain hairstyles that are acceptable, but you, it would be best that you would look at the regulation. What about facial hair? Males, gotta be clean shaven. What kind of things do you get issued at RSP? Um, it varies from state to state and uh, site to site, but um, water bottle. <laughs> and we have a, sometimes we have what we call battle books, which is things to expect with basic training, has the army uh, values, the, the soldier's creed, the warrior ethos, uh, military time, basic knowledge that you would need to know as a soldier so that when you get there, you're not learning while you get there and being stressed about that, you'll be less stressed. How is your MLS determined when transferring from a different branch? We have like a, a, a calculator in the system. We plug in your uh, particular MLS that you're qualified in. And if it correlates or transitions to, or if it's related to an Army MLS, then we will transition from there. If not, we will send you to school and reclass you in a new MLS. And what advice do you have for those heading to basic training? Get yourself mentally prepared. Know that you're going to be yelled at. You're going to have some good days, some not so good days. You're going to be told to do things, when to do it, how to do it, even when you don't feel like doing it. 
But at the end of the day, it's about working together as a team, paying attention to the details, the little details, and um, just do what you're told, and that's it. What if you're a single mom in the guard? Um, not really sure what they mean by that, but it's, I mean, as long Advice? As I mean, you know, you're a single mom in the guard, but you want to join, but you're not sure what to do next. You're not sure how that will affect your family. You think you mentioned a family care plan earlier? Right. You would have to, you definitely have to get a family care plan. And the only way this would work is you have to legally assign somebody as a guardian over your child. No. So it basically protects you and it protects us. It protects you so that way when you're away on training or drill weekends or deployments or whatever, um, that person can speak on your behalf and that, that's how it helps you and it protects you. So they can legally speak for you and it protects us so that way you can't use your child as an excuse to why you can't come in on your weekends or everything else that I discussed before. So we do have a lot of single parents that do join and it's really dependent on whether you have that support. So definitely talk to your family, if you have a significant other, um, but we definitely need somebody who's willing to step up to the plate and you know watch over your child. What about the education benefits in the Guard? Um, as previously said before, we have the federal tuition assistance, which will pay up to $4,000. We have the scholarship program, which is referred to as the Montgomery GI Bill. And because we get the best of both worlds in the National Guard, because we're both federal and state, Every state has state tuition assistance, which will pay up to 100% towards your state tuition. And so, how can I get started in the Guard? Sit down with the recruiter, write down all your questions. Uh, your recruiter will share with you exactly who we are, what we do, what we have to offer you. Um, if, at, if you're still interested, they'll tell you to take the next step, which is to take the test, to figure out if you can join or not, and to figure out what MOS is or job skills that you're able to sign up for that you're pre-qualified for based on your test results. And then from there, you'll do the medical exam and hopefully you'll sign your contract. When do I get my uniform and get to lace up those boots? <laughs> when you go to basic training. So you're gonna go to reception, which is the in-processing stage prior to getting to basic training. So by day two, you should be in your Army PTs or your physical training uniform, which is the shorts and the t-shirts. Um, and then from there, you'll be wearing the new OCP uniform. We're going to be wrapping up shortly, but if I want to be a military police, what would you say? If you're qualified for it and it's available, go for it. I would love to be a military policeman, but I'm red, green, color blind, so I couldn't do it. All right. Well, thank you guys so much. If you have other questions, feel free to direct message us through Facebook, and let's all say thank you to who are you. Say who you are again. Sergeant First Class Sports, recruiting out of New York City, and uh, it was a pleasure to be here. And... Uh, Go Garden. Hallelujah. Thanks, guys.